And then last, you need to be an employee mediator. So whenever a new policy comes, right, I give you an example of IAS. I'm coming with multiple. So every year, as you know, that cost optimization has to be done, right? And some point around, you also have to see that certain benefits have to be re-looked at, right? So we're right now in the process of re-looking at certain benefits. You have to end of the day go and communicate it, right? And you're a mediator. You have to, as a, you're a neutral party, you have to swing both, take care of the management, at the same time also the employee's interest. It's both interest has to be managed. And it's not going to be easy task. It's, you have to take a very, very, you know, balanced approach in doing it. So I, I can't give an example of a couple of policies here because it's going to infringe into the, uh, I'm letting off certain information. So sorry for that, but I can't take those examples. But however, uh, I hope you got the message. The message is very simple. If there are any changes that is happening, you need to go and communicate it. In the past, I just told you, letting go of people is not an easy task. And that's the job of HR. And classic example of ratings of people. Every management manager is hesitant to go and tell what rating of an employee is. Okay? And what do you know what they'll say? HR told us this is the guidelines, you have to follow it. So we have put you here. Okay? You're a good rater. You're a good. You're not a high performer, you're good. Why? Sir, why am I not doing blah, 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 blah. Go, no, no, HR has given guidelines. They said you can't go more than this. They all put the blame on HR. Okay? HR has just given guidelines. Guidelines doesn't mean that you need to go strictly by it. So that's why you need to be a mediator to ensure that you give the right approach and right solution for them. And how they are all wired across? Because you can't just play one day I'm going to wear this hat, second day I'll play second hat, third day. No. At every moment of your role, you may have to play this role at every second, probably. One person will come and ask you clarification on a policy. Suddenly, other person will come and say, sir, I want to go for a visa application. They have rejected. Can you talk to the visa uh, department? Can you get this completely signed up? Suddenly, there will be a mail which come up to you and say, sir, there has been a harassment issue. Suddenly, so you as an HR person will be bombarded with a lot of information. And for each of this, you have to take a decision. And you have to play this role very carefully. And that's the reason I said it's chronicle challenges, acute challenges, policy management, people management. Because each of this had to be handled differently. Because you can't have one solution fitting all. And that's the reason I say HR is very, very critical in organization to play this role. Nobody else can play this role. Trust me. Nobody. Your finance person cannot take this role. Marketing guys can't take this role. It's the HR who will be, end of the day, who is a cornerstone for all the people matters. That's the reason I'm saying, as a partner, you need to understand what is the role that you would like to take. When you look at the overall you know, role, what is the most critical role for an HR business partner when there was a research made? They found that most of the time, it's HR business partnering, which is strategic partnering, less of operation manager, less of emergency and emergency employee mediator. It's more of the previous one. What is that? Understanding the criticality of the business and understanding the solution. Okay? So please understand that you need to focus on that coming to that final one, okay. What enables HR? So HRBP enables are all three. One, the person. Second, design of the job. Third is the HR function structure. All these three things are very important for a successful HR business partnering in Norway. I'm going to skip this quickly because uh, I don't see the uh, huge relevance out here. But what is important is what defines HR business partner. First. The large portion is competencies. And that's what I was talking to you some time back. And if you saw what I demonstrated in my previous session, your knowledge about your basic law, statistics, knowledge about your marketing, knowledge about financial knowledge, right? You got to, and, and of course, end of the day, it's psychology and so on and so forth. All these are very important competencies for an HR guy, right? And I told you, as I told you, I'm a marketing guy, but to move into HR over a period of time. Right? So, your competencies are very critical. Second, your previous experience, motivation. So, what counts? You know how much does education count? 75% of it. Okay? So, what? So, is, does education directly translate to competencies? No. Education is a part of your knowledge. 
the competencies that you build is your practice, your exposure that you get. So, that is why we always use this formula called the 70, 30 and 10 process or 70, 20, 10. 70 percent of the person learns from what? On the job, all of you know it. 20 percent is on the exposure that a person gets, right? And third, 10 percent is only classroom. So, what you are getting right now is forms only the 10 percent. Now, I leave it to you guys to go and make the rest 80 percent or 90 percent, right? So, that is how understand from the strategy business perspective, you have to build a competency. So, please, my suggestion to you all of you is get your competencies right, go deeper into that, okay? That is what will differentiate you. And when there was a question asked, what is that in HR business person role, what is the most critical? Business acumen is the most relevant one. Second is workforce planning, engagement strategies, successful or uh, succession management of So, you have look at the score, this is like the Pareto scale, right? You see the Pareto scale, right? 80 percent of the job is done by 20 percent of the people, right? Or 80 percent of the wealth is carried by the 20 percent of the people. The same Pareto's principles applied here as well. So, if you look at it, the entire process, you have a large portion of the team or the competencies that is required is business acumen, strategy workforce plan. I marked it in red. Have you been observant? Why have I marked it red? Because that is what I am going to tell you with my experience the next slides. I am going to cover strategic workforce planning. How do we do strategic workforce planning in a corporate world, all right? And this is what I have been doing in the last couple of years, all right? Introduced, we are the first one to bring into my previous role of the SWP, uh, working with a guy from IBM and then applied it. So, in simply put, what is workforce planning in a nutshell, okay? So, what is the purpose of workforce planning? All of us have studied it. I am sure if you go and read Ashwatthappa's book, have you heard of Ashwatthappa's book? I knew it. <laughs> HRM by Ashwatthappa. <laughs> Uh, I know if I take the names of other authors, I do not think you will never mention them or you do not even <laughs> refer to them, okay. But please do not go on referring Ashwatthapa, please. There are a lot of amazing authors you know, in the world where you can build your competencies that way, okay. What you read through Ashwatthapa is a clear exam papers, okay. Let me be very honest. In that, he has mentioned very clearly workforce planning. I do not know how many of you read it. There is a chapter in workforce planning. Any, anybody remembers this or anybody has read it recently? In Ashwatthapa's book, I, I, I do due respect to this gentleman, right? But what I see is it's going to be more of a copy paste of a lot of things, right? I, I don't see there's any real research work that the gentleman has done. So I know when I was a student, I've seen Ashwatthapa, and I'm sure you guys are also referring to the Ashwatthapa. That's the reason I say. All right, okay. Align workforce with business strategy and plans. That's what workforce planning does. Okay, you'll not see this in his book. Okay, you'll not see this in his book. Linking business focus, cost targets, and headcount, right? Identifying critical roles and competencies, gaps for strategic initiators. And then, of course, integrate with the decision making process. This is what, in summary, what workforce planning does, all right? I gave you a little bit of insights in the morning when I was talking about the example of how, when I hire an IA, why am I paying so much of money to this guy when he's going to be here for a short assignment in India, all right? So, Establish action plans, build or buy or work for. So, this is what I was talking about earlier. Do I build the capability or do I buy the capability? Do I have the time frame to keep on buying or build? All right. So, that is a mixture between the two. I can give you classical examples of it a little later. So, what is the methodology? Methodology is this confirm business strategy plan, evaluate the current workforce, align workforce demand and strategy as per the plan, identify gaps and areas of productivity. Prepare for decision making and create action plans and of course, end of the day, execution. Interestingly, we as Indians are amazing, amazing good till the last point comes. We are pretty bad at this. I am telling you, I am seriously telling you, we are amazing planners, amazing strategy thinkers, but when it comes to execution, no, we falter there. And I gave you a classic example why I shifted from marketing to HR for the very simple reason, right? Because it is execution which actually 
makes a huge difference. I know how many of you read the book called The Execution, the Larry Bossidy, right? If not, please do, right? In that, he very clearly lays out the strategy of execution, the art of execution. When anybody reads a letter, no, or uh, the copy, they'll say, oh, art of execution. What does it mean? It's the art of execution in business, okay? So, the art of execution may be learned or interpreted in multiple ways, okay? So, that's not the art to what you probably most often refer. If we do 80 percent is here, 20 percent is here, but this 20 percent determines whether the 80 percent is valid or not, okay. How does it all tie up? Now, we all talk about talent pipeline, talent, talent supply chain, okay. So, I know uh, some of you may be familiar with logistics, right, supply chain management and so on and so forth, you would have heard of it. HR guys also use supply chain thought process, okay. So, you are not, so you use this uh, talent supply chain. What is this talent supply chain? It is a simple way. Look at the same method, but see how it is impacting all the process. Starting from rewards, learning and development, talent and talent acquisition. It all be impacted with your strategy plan, right. People analytics and people analytics actually help you as a input into your data. I will give you a classic example. So, let us look at a very simple equation, okay. Anticipate, right. How do you anticipate? What is the future of our business telling us in terms of future of a workforce? What will be the future pattern of a current workforce? Which critical competency will we need in the future? Which critical roles will be key for us to succeed in the transformation of our business? How will be the job markets and the geographies that we are ready to operate in? I gave you examples. So, some of them in the morning when I was giving, uh, talking about the fortifying HR, right. All that, do you see that? Your capability is an HR business partner to anticipate things. What are my present competencies? What are the future competencies or skill set that I need? Because if I were to give my practical example right now, we are going a huge, uh, you know, change ourselves from Rolls Royce perspective, right. We have been traditionally be a mechanical engineer, engineering company. We are known to be the four frontiers or the pioneers in engineering, right. So, when it comes to aero engines, we are the pioneer. But when it comes to the new data thing, we are a little lag back. So, we are making a huge change. And we are also looking at the new electrical engineering capabilities on board. We never thought of electrical engineers earlier, but now it is a new focus. We are talking about electric and aero engines, right. We are talking about can we have aero engines which has got a hybrid option of gas turbine as well as electric motors in it, all right. With the research is already on board, we have already tried out with one of the engines, all right. We are now tying up partnering with Siemens to come up with a power plant for us where it is going to be laid out in aircraft. So, you are going to have an engine, right, which has got hybrid options. It has got grass turbine option, at the same time also an engine electrical motor. It is going to be a constant option. Why? Because as you fly up, right, if the gears can actually generate more power and store it and then again pump back when it is required when it goes to landing. When, when do you actually need thrust? When you need thrust, take off and then landing. But of course, you also need a thrust when you go forward, right. But you can also have light burners for that to push forward, because you already have a alternate height and there, there's always something called cruise level height. I don't know how many of you know, anyway, that's, that's on the aero industry side. So, there's a cruise level, right. So, for that, now we are trying to look at electrical engineers. Very interesting for me, I come from electrical engineering company. When I come here, I was only handling mechanical engineering. Now, it's interesting to know that we are now gradually changing the electrical industry, right. It's an amazing thing for me, right. Simulate. It's not enough that you anticipate. Simulate and see what is going to be there. That's where your predictive analysis, your capability of statistical analysis comes into picture, right? Simulate and see what type of balancing act you have to do between the transformation workforce. What will be the impact of business result? How much? You, suppose I invest more on people now. What will be my return on investment in terms of sales growth? I'll give you a classical example. I'll I'll show you. What if my growth rate is four percent? How many people can I afford? with the cost inflation and I cannot increase my price of my product, okay, but my business grows only at 4 percent. Can I keep on hiring more people? Can I keep on uh, maintaining the same level of headcount? No, you will see that, right. I will talk about that a little later. And then of course, I told you about the execution piece, right. What are key success factors? How is your plan smart? All of you know what smart is, right. What is smart? 
smart goals simple measurable now we use the word specific specific measurable achievable realistic and time bound right so that's what we so call it as smart so same way in the execution also you need to have a smart so ase anticipate simulate and execute is the simple now how do you do that look at strategic workforce planning look at what your management competencies are develop strategic workforce planning do analytics for which you need business acumen which is very important right look in competencies strategic workforce planning in simulate you should work able to work with collaborative with others you should have a ability to work with others again collaborate rewards talent acquisition side it's nothing but the various execution side you should have the capability of project management how many of you guys know the project management capability here project management capability there is a certification course in pmp right this is normally used in construction industry they used to say but trust me every engineering company will have a project management team why because they are the ones who are looking at what is the cost what is the returns how many people can i afford and these are the guys who are using the latest tools that is available in project management please do understand you as an hr person may have to also understand the project management capability okay and last now if you look at one by one okay let's look at anticipate discovery questions you as a hr person will go and ask sir what is the business strategy that we have these are all the tools i'm telling this is how practically swp is done you go and ask business strategy find out your org structure okay suppose you are new to the place look at how the org structure looks like M map it out and see what are the various line versus have you heard the the different org structures yeah line versus staff right we use a word so line versus staff how do you look look at the various management level look at the span and layer we use a word called span and layer all right identify what are the critical what what is that so critical about that role which will make or break that business identify that and please note this changes every 2 or 3 years depending upon the business strategy all right so identify what are the top 2 or 3 roles per strategy and for that roles what are the competencies required this is a basic fundamental inputs that you need for your swp okay now there are a lot of discovery questions how do you go about it so you go and with set of questions on when you say business strategy is not going sir you tell me a business strategy what is the plan you go and tell this to your business manager he'll say huh you don't know you didn't know that oh sorry sir if you don't know sorry you lost the you already lost the ground you can't go and say sir can i understand your business strategy you have to go with doing your homework basic homework and going sitting with the manager right have a deal get a set up a meeting and find out spend some time with the strategy team and understand what are we doing what are we coming up with then we just go with the set of questions and answers all right with that questions with your answers ready you have the translating capability from function a business strategy into key four workforce implications what are those how is your workforce profile changing competitive geography current hr priorities aligned to business how do you drive workforce efficiency and productivity critical roles and competencies what is it overall talent strategy right so this is what your as an hr person will have to answer based on the business strategy when you ask your business the business will give you answer like this they'll say solution service push we want to really grow services and solutions okay this is a practical example i'm just sharing with you okay so this is which was done couple of years back so i can share this around this 6 7 years back i did it so new customer segments as i said we can get into new customers and segments area that we can go right new geography area we want to expand we want to expand to the next 100 new geographies this answer that i got from the business right 6 7 years ago and then of course there are other areas that look what is my this is all i got input right what are the business plans behind this what are the workforce needs to make this happen if this have to be there what needs to be done what goes behind solution and service push how much resource can i put under services side because service is always a good business right always have a very high margin but do you have the wherewithal to have all service engineers in your team no can i only hire few and then outsource it can i do my partners can i build a chain of partners so will that work that's a strategy 
I need to identify. So how many people will I have in house? How many people will I have to build through my partners over a period of two to three years? New customer segments. Okay, we have a product. We are not being there. So can I my existing sales guys go and do that sales? Possibly no. When we looked into data science, uh, data solutions, that was a completely different forum. What we used to do in the business, right? So data selling or going and capturing the data market is very different from a typical selling my switches boards, right? So do I have the same competency person who can go and sell the data and get a data center job for me? No, I cannot. I need to have a person who has got the capability of looking at the entire product portfolio that I have and has the ability to go and tell the customer and say, so we have got the, all these products. We have got a capability to seamlessly connect all this and give you a solution, right? <coughs> That's about new customers and segment. New geographies. We have been doing very well in all the mega, you know, metros. <coughs> give a moment, please. So we have new geographies. Let's say we have been very active in top 50 cities of country. Now we want to go to the next 100 cities, right? So you need to identify the profile of each of the 100 cities. If it's going to be South India, how many cities would you go and map? If it's going to be North India, East, West, because each of the sales guys' typical ability to sell, what happens in South cannot even work in West. What happens in West cannot work in East nor in North. It also depends in terms of the power availability, right? The buying purchase pattern, right? Your per capita income of each state. So when I go and sell, there's a possibility that a person who's <coughs> doing extremely well in South India will go and fail in North. Why? Because he doesn't know the typical markets, how the business works. Trust me, guys, the business sales business in North India is very different from the South. And so is from the West and East. So I need to understand what are the new geographies? Where am I going to put? Where is my thrust? <coughs> can I hire from my own uh, service partners who can be trained and then put here because my level of skill knowledge is very different from my partner skill level, right? So can I groom them? How long will it take for me to do that? Will my present contract agreement with my partners allow me to poach from my partners? I have to look into that. Can I redraft it? Then I'll go to the legal department. Sir, can you look at it? How long will it take? We have to wait till before we hire this guy. We may have to have anti, you know, uh, anti competing clause as well, right? Anti-poaching clauses. So there are a lot of things that you as an HR person have to think about it. Sometimes the business says, no, 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 we don't matter. It doesn't matter. Go, just go and get it. At whatever cost? Yes, whatever cost. Don't take it as a uh, you know, green signal and say, go and hire at any salary. No. By the end of the day, you only have to <laughs> sustain and maintain them here, right? Because you're going to disrupt all the people who are sitting here. So what we had to do is, when we did this new geographies, it's a different strategy that we played. All right. We create a new organization called as say, a regional sales organization, apart from the normal sales organization. That was a, a contrast from the way we have been running business. That was a difficult decision. And we created something called as uh, VPs or regional heads for each of them. The present business heads were very uncomfortable. How can you make a person who is sitting with me, who was two or three lines down the line, has been brought it to the same level? You know, how do you manage that? Because they were top performers. Because that particular regional sales organization needed a separate strategy from the normal way of working. But we took a call and we as an HR had to go and sell it out. And we made it successful. And that regional sales <coughs> team had a separate incentive scheme from the normal salesperson. There was a lot of fight between these guys and that guys. Why? Because they are trying to infringe their areas, they were infringing their areas. End of the day, everybody to make money. And end of the day, we have to, yeah. <coughs> and end of the day, we have to ensure that we have to generate business to the company. Company is one. Company wants to grow. I gave an example, 1 billion to 2 billion in 3 years' time. This is what I will give an example. And this is how we use strategic workforce planning in deciding what is that we need to do. So, Identify the critical roles. We looked at, we bucketed people into different side, all right? Criticality to strategy execution, ability to attract and retain. See, please remember, you can attract people by paying the salary that you want. But can you retain them? 
can you manage your present workforce? And though new people who are coming, they may be hardly 5 or 10% of your total population. What do you do with the rest of the population? You have to manage them as well, right? You can't let go. People have been working with you for 10 years, 15 years. Can you let go of them? No, you have to balance it. So, it's always a choice between critical to this execution piece and ability to attract. So, we actually had looked at various options and you have to map it properly. And that's where your SWOT analysis, which we teach, right? Management, that helps you. Right? You have to apply the same thought process. Look at the sentence here. It says, can we eliminate these roles to fund or build or buy on critical roles? Can we let go of certain roles, which is not so critical for the business, so that money which you get from them can fund your strategic future role? Tough call, right? That means you have let go of some of the people who have been in the company for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. In fact, you in my present company, we have done it just last year. We had to go let go of some of the people whom we have realized that they are not going to be adding value in the future. Why? Because the business landscape is changing. So, we have let go of more than 800 plus people, but of course, with a complete severance package of six months. And they are so happy with that. They said, they are so still loyal to the organization. They have said, we will be back and we will be more than happy to help you because you have spent so many time, but however, it was not appropriate in the future. So, you have to take tough calls, guys. It is not easy. Right? So, as an HR person, you have to look at strategically. 